and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zen. Yo. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-being to watching every single Shonen Jump anime in existence that is available to us in English, hopefully. Though, funny enough, we could probably just watch it in Japanese and have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> I've been watching it in Japanese. It's just subtitled. I know. That's what I'm saying. Is like watching it. I, I yeah. I guess another thing. Oh, about oh, just I, oh. Okay. I thought you yeah, meant I mean, like no, okay, sub, no subtitles it. at all. <laughs> no, that would be the most hilarious reveals at 200 episodes into Gintama. I was somehow watching the dub the entire time. <laughs> they never even made it to episode 232. Just a, I think a, a one season and the movies. That's about it. Uh, but yeah, anything that is available to us. Our main series at the point, at this current point, is Gintama, and the other one being Koriko, which we will get back to the second that we have available time for it, because we're on a very big arc, so it's gonna take a while for us to get back to that one. But our main focus is trying to get, finish, uh, the story on Gintama by the end of, uh, 2025. And at this point, we're almost halfway into the year. We're like... Uh, we're getting there, especially as now we're going to start barreling through a whole bunch of different stuff. So that's Shonen Archive. Uh, thank you very much for watching the show. We'll see you guys next time. Wait, wrong. Reverse it. Let's talk about the episodes of Gintama. Today we're <laughs> going to be talking about episodes 232 to 236, which is the Renho arc of, of the series. So Zen, why don't you start us off with episode 232, which is called The People Who Tend to Forget Tend to Show Up After You Forget About Them. It's a very funny name. I didn't remember that that was the name, considering who ends up showing up in this arc. Um, it is. It's a very fun. They play uh, off in a very good way. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> episode uh, 232. Um, Hasra oh. is talking to our gang, mm -hmm. and he's like, uh, I found a sign from Elizabeth that says don't look um, but I'm just now realizing that like Elizabeth has been gone for a really long time and somehow I didn't know um, it's been a year I think he says it's been a year since Elizabeth has shown up in an episode and that made me want to double back and go like has it really been a year Is since it actually? <laughs> As in, it, it kind of feels like it now that they mentioned it's like I actually don't remember the last time Elizabeth showed up on an episode it's been a very long time uh, so they're like, all right, let's look for her. Uh, we're going to go and, and, you know, look through Elizabeth's stuff. And all of Elizabeth's stuff is just signs, just like a huge amount of signs for any possible situation that she might need signs for. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then they start, like, recovering Katsura's terrible memories. And he's having this memory of, like, an old lady who would tell picture stories to kids at the park, but no one appreciated her because no one cares about picture stories anymore but elizabeth would go to the park to like help her with it and then like she fell down the stairs and elizabeth is like bandaging her knee and shit it's, it's like a whole <laughs> thing um but then there is uh i don't I, this is, i believe is a new character um yes fumiko who appears and then it turns out that the old lady was not really an old lady. It was another Elizabeth, because there's more Elizabeths. Um, and then they're like, the Elizabeths are actually um, an invader alien species. Um, and they keep... She keeps pouring this, like, liquid in Katsura's mouth when he faints, which I guess is supposed to, like, wipe his memory or whatever, because he's remembering what happened the first time. Um... And then they find out that they're, um, like, an invading alien species going to conquer the Earth. And then Katsura is in, like, disbelief. And he says that Elizabeth is his friend and would never would never conquer the Earth because they know each other too well and all this stuff. Um, and I forget, is this the episode where they keep calling her a slut or is that the next episode? It's, <laughs> I think the next one is the one where they call her, um... The, I think it's like, yeah, well, what makes you think that I'm slut? It's something like that. I think it's a combination of this one. or I think it, they do it a lot. There's a lot of mentioning of her being a slut for various times. But I think they do mention it here. It is in this episode. Yeah, I think it comes up, but I don't think they do the whole the whole shtick about it yet. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, two characters end up showing up. 
right at the end um, that we haven't seen in a long time because they're trying to get Elizabeth's like information out of this woman and they can't get it. And then I think they crash land in the park and it's fucking Sakamoto and whatever his little assistant is. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Mutsu. And I'm pretty sure he even plays it off like, <laughs> I think I haven't been in an episode in a really long time. Yes, he says, how many episodes has it been? And it's in the next episode, but he has a really good bit where he's like, I'm here to help you against Jin. He's like, "You that was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> you're late like what are you doing yeah but that's it so yes they do the the bit oh yes they do some of the slutty bit now this is where they have that joke we, i guess we can get into it more now um some of the stuff i like because i'll say for this one this is where they have that joke where it says a woman's body is a lot like space has always been like space because they're looking up her skirt while she's dressed in the elizabeth costume yeah, and she's like doing the little like a little wiggle in her elizabeth costume yeah and then yeah. <laughs> and Cogger, who's under there with them says space all i see is a forest <laughs> <laughs> which is i was like holy shit so funny enough uh we didn't mention it because so much of this episode is just straight up unwatchable censor <laughs> on crunchy roll uh, because this episode, they legit got in trouble with the politician that they were making fun of. That's funny. So that whole bit where there was a whole bunch of, that was actually in, I've because I looked it up and I went to go see it uncensored. They showed like a slightly like the, the more mosaic, like what they do with the Gundams version of that. Mm -hmm. But they had to censor so much of this because that politician got angry at them. Is and that why it's blacked out? And like every time they say the name, it's bleeped. Yes, because they were—they like got big legit black mad. Bar. Yeah, apparently, and you know, maybe it's a lot of conjecture. But a lot of the reports I saw from from older Gintama fans when I was looking this up were like, "I can't believe this is the the episode that almost got them canceled because they were so pissed. Like they stopped um, reruns of this episode. They they never this episode has never reran in Japan. That's crazy." It is. I was like, holy shit. No wonder so much of it is just censored. And uh, I believe the actual person, uh, I feel, I believe the politician's name is also Renho. Like, I think that, yeah, Renho Murata in the name of this arc is called the Renho arc. So all the Elizabeths are even named after them. Oh, <laughs> uh, which is really funny. Um... But yeah, I was looking up the 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 theory behind this the not the theory the the history behind. It. I was like, holy shit! It's crazy to think that of all the episodes to get them in trouble, it's this one. I know this is like not even a. That's super funny. Yeah, and it, it only got funnier because I now I imagine this politician getting super angry. So then when um <laughs> when. <laughs> When she starts doing the whole bit, when Fubuko starts doing the bit about like, oh my god, all I see is trees, I'm like, you call me a slut, and she starts getting her ass pounded for it, all I could imagine was this politician just getting fucking furious the longer the episode went on. It's like how- Just like gritting their teeth, like enraged. Unbelievably levels of balding that you have never seen. <laughs> it's named after That's them. That's so funny. It is. But yeah, I really I thought this was a good introduction for this arc. It was a very it was very uh, weird because I was trying to remember all the stuff about Elizabeth and trying to remember everything that I would in theory know about Elizabeth because it's always been kept kind of mysterious. Like I remember way back when we were seeing so many of them when there were like multiple Elizabeths and we were like, so what the hell is actually up with Elizabeth? Because we've shown in the past that there was. <laughs> a race that looked a lot like elizabeth and they were able to have a child and that made very little sense to me because i thought that it was like a a sheet that you put over yourself so does the baby actually look like them and stuff like that so it was uh interesting to see them i like that they call them the white devils which is just a very funny name <laughs> anytime you see them the white devils um I like that right from the jump, they immediately start making fun of Fumiko for being a very clear, very clear ripoff of Fujiko from Lupin the Third, mm -hmm. <laughs> down to, down to the whole sex a sexy act and everything, uh, which is really good. I think this one is also where they talk about. No, it might be it might be either at the end of this one where they say, it might be at the beginning of the next one actually, where they talk about Dark Vader. That's the next one. That's okay. the next one. That's the next one. And yeah, I liked it when um. Sakamoto showed up because at that moment I went, oh yeah, that's right. They got Elizabeth from Sakamoto. 
I, it had been so long since he had done anything. I was like, I forgot. That's right. That was the whole setup is that he gave, he like was transporting them for some reason. So I was trying to think about like, so what was up with that? And then I, then the next episode, they kind of tell you, but yeah, I liked his day, uh, his entrance going in there when he's like, it's been a very long time. And I also like that the episode is named the way it is because it's been over a hundred episodes since Sakamoto showed up. <laughs> I even made. I even went back to check to see has it really been over a hundred episodes? And the person who had wrote in a guide for us for this specific arc said the character who has not shown up for over a hundred episodes, so it's known. <laughs> it took him a very That's long. Crazy. That's so wild. It is. It is hilarious. How do how do you uh, how do you feel about it, Zen? Uh, it was good. It was. Uh, it definitely didn't make me think it was going to go where it ended up. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> it goes um, places. <laughs> yeah, it goes places. Uh, this episode was, it was a fine start. It was, th- it fits the uh, Gintama habit of like silly, dumb stuff. And then like actually shit happens <laughs> later on. A, a lot um, of the stuff that's set up in, in this episode comes back by the, the end of the arc. Which is I, something... I think that it was one of the funnier ones to be like one of the arc startups. Cause sometimes they're kind of yeah. miss. Um, I think this one was pretty good. It was also... The White Devils, as Elizabeth's uh, species name, is very funny. <laughs> it's very good. Every single time it showed up, the white... Damn, these White Devils! <laughs> very good. I also like that shot of them ominous, ominously looking at the... I've said that word so fucking wrong. Uh, looking at the Earth. Like, all of them just staring at them. <laughs> and yeah, all... with the giant eyes. <laughs> Yeah, really good. I thought that was uh, fantastic. So, as I said on Twitter, I'm resetting the Shonen Archive time since Sakamoto appeared in an episode physically to zero. He's currently at zero. <laughs> we'll see when the, by the end of this arc, because he disappears by the end of this arc, when that <laughs> when he will show up again. But right now, it's at zero. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Episode 233. Uh, space... Ururan Homestay. I, okay, sure. Go ahead, Zen. <laughs> so uh, they're up on Sakamoto's um, like giant spaceship because they want to stop the Renho uh, from taking over the Earth. Uh, and they all the all the Renho army uh, is like starting to invade, and it. It's like turning them into Elizabeths or something. Like they have Elizabeth faces and they have like signs that they. I don't actually know because it seems like they just abandoned this later on. They said they're, like, they're, they're, they're spreading the seeds and the seeds are what's yeah, turning. Yeah, they keep them. saying they've spread the seeds and it's just like <laughs> that people are turning wrong. into Elizabeths, I guess. <laughs> I guess. It does sound um, a little bit wrong when you're saying it, it specifically. Does. Especially with the reveal of what Elizabeths are later on. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> no, it but, doesn't. Um, so they're like turning into Elizabeth, and they're like they're. It's almost like a zombie newscast where they're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> these people!" It's like on the news, um, and then Sakamoto's like, "Oh yeah, I brought them," because I thought that you know, I, I, I he said he had a punch card for um, um for visiting the, like a, uh, the, host the bar, the, the girl bar, whatever it's yeah. called. Uh, um, Otai's friend is the one that he says when he says like, "Oh, I can't wait to see her again." It's like that was Otai's friend, if you remember her. The one. Yeah, with he the, has like a, a stamp card, like a like a free sandwich stamp card. He does. Um, and it's like super huge. It's like fifty visits that are stamped <laughs> off on it. It's an insane amount of visits. <laughs> and then of course everyone's pissed off because they realize that it was his problem to begin with. Um. And then his extremely capable sidekick is like, I- I've already researched their plan. I know what to do. <laughs> I love their dynamic. It's very funny. It is. Um, so they go off to, um, like, infiltrate using Elizabeth costumes. And everyone has, like, their own customized Elizabeth look. Uh, except for Shinpachi, who's just painted white. <laughs> and he just, like, looks like Shinpachi. Um and then Aaron's like, whoa, is that Shimpachi? What a disguise. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> um, Sakamoto starts getting sick. So Katsura's like, just open a window. And so he rips his his suit, like his Elizabeth <laughs> suit. And then like, 
And so then he's like, just look far away so you don't get sick. And then I don't know what he's looking at, but he leans over a railing and he like puts his hands to his eyes like he's looking, you know, like you would look over the horizon. And for yes. some reason, when Kentucky goes, don't look that far, I almost died. I don't know why. <laughs> it wasn't funny, but it fucking killed me. It might just um, be the, the, the dynamic of those three together is enough. <laughs> yeah, it might be. But it was very funny. Um, and then he, uh, Shimpachi refuses to be not in an Elizabeth suit, so he, like, forces himself into Kagura's and is, like, halfway out the top of it. So he's, like, stuck out of the top of it. Um, they end up in the, like, mess hall with all of the other soldiers, and Fumiko starts explaining about Dark Vader and how, like, the the whole army structure works and how Dark Vader is, like, the ruler of them that... that treats them like tools and all this stuff um so they all go to get their food and their food is rice and a game cartridge like yeah. er, all of them eat game cartridges except you have to um you yeah. have to be like higher ranking in the army to get the better games so yeah. like the grunts get the shitty games yeah they get famicom games and then the super yeah. famicom games are saved for the higher ups yeah and so then they are like yeah oh no only you know i forget what i forget what rank it is but like i think the captains or something only captains can have dragon quest and final fantasy <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so they go and they, like they end up getting in trouble um because they're trying to eat the good games and they won't let them eat the good games uh, but elizabeth shows up and like protects them and it's like oh yeah i was gonna recruit these guys you know they've got they've got gumption i want them on my team um and then uh, Musu is like trying to run a ploy on Dark Vader, and she ends up uh, drawing a gun on him, and is like, "Your plans are over, Dark Vader." And then he's like, "Let me show you why we're the White Devils." And I, I think it's the end of this episode where it shows the they just have a bunch of fucking Gundams. <laughs> they do, and uh, they make mention here. This is where we also learn that Sunrise also is the animation company behind Gundam. <laughs> And they talk about it in the next episode that the Dark Vader is so smart that they got Sunrise to do the animation so that they couldn't sue him for copyright infringement. <laughs> because it was them that made the Gundam. <laughs> so how are you going to sue yourself? Um, yeah, and that's where the episode ends. How do you feel about this one, Zen? Uh, it was really good. Um, the reveal at the end that it's literally just a Gundam with a mosaic covered face like on the news was really fucking like it's exactly the same design <laughs> um, as the Gundam. And I guess this show must air on the same TV network as Gundam or something mm -hmm. um, because in the preview for the next episode, everyone's like, wait a minute, what would happen if this was on a different network? <laughs> like, what, what would happen to this show if it wasn't on this network? Um so I guess that's why they were able to literally just make it a Gundam. Um, but it was it was extremely funny. I really, really like everybody's uh, personalized Elizabeth suits. Oh, they're very good. Where they all have everyone's hair except for Kagura's, who just has her, like, hair thingies that yeah, go on her, the side of her head. Yes. That's really good. Uh, the 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 Elizabeth suit for Gintoki has the, the his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really good. Uh, the Sakamoto one looks so much like Sakamoto, and I th I'm almost positive the Elizabeth one from for Katsura is the same one from the from the Betty Sakura arc. <laughs> the it looks so much like when the that brief moment where he's like dressed up as Elizabeth during uh, Benny Sakura, or where, where Elizabeth is dressed up as him um, during Benny Sakura, it looks almost exactly the same. Oh, you're right. It does look almost exactly like it for the Katsura one. Mm hmm It does. Uh, yeah, I really like this one, too. This one was really good. Uh, it might, I think it really is a dynamic of S Sakamoto, Katsura, and Gintoki together are, like, the perfect... It's, for some reason, the, the like, the, the fact that Katsura is kind of an idiot, but he seems smart when he's next to Sakamoto. <laughs> so it ends up being, like, two different layers of idiot, where it's, like, one person... It's a very similar to, I guess, Three, St Three Stooges, where, um... There's clearly one of the group who's stupider than the rest. Yeah, and then, like, but he gets along really well with Katsura in comparison to, like, Gintoki, who kind of just... He doesn't actually dislike them both, but he's, like, clearly irritated with their bullshit at all times. He is. Uh, well, while, like, 
Because Sakamoto's just stupid, and Katsura is like an airhead. He's like a complete fucking like what? What could you possibly be talking about at any time? Mm-hmm. Um, so and then it, it's funny because Gintama, like Gintoki, not Gintama, uh, Gintoki is usually not that character, right? He's like one of the ones that's pissing off. It's usually Shimpachi that's that character. Mm-hmm. So I guess when you put him in that situation, it's funny. It is. It ends up being. It ends up being also that you get a lot of good like hints of uh, personality when like when they like when they're asking when they're all together and they're like how could they f- we're about to go to war and they're feeding us Famicom games. This is unacceptable. Yeah, and- when they're like, on this terrible nutrition, <laughs> on this terrible nutrition, and they all get up and you think that they're gonna start a stink and actually what they're asking for are for better games. And it's so funny because Sakamoto asked for Final Fantasy IV, uh, Gintoki asked for Dragon Quest V and then fucking Katsura asked for a virtual boy and <laughs> I think Shibachi says like you're not even in the right ballpark that's a console it's not a video game <laughs> and then what he, they're asking for and I think he also says like Sakamoto says because he has uh, stomach trouble he's like oh I would love to play some Final Fantasy 4 right now I can't wait to be with the Red Wings though I think I would probably throw up the second I got to it because I can't actually <laughs> scarf it down at the moment that's really good um there's also a, um, the continued moment of them in the suits when uh, Shinpachi's trying to figure out what to do. He's like, I need to go inside. Um, I need to go inside. I need to go inside one of your suits. And I think someone says, like, go inside Fumiko's. Hers is probably very large. <laughs> and then he does for a brief moment go look under it. And he's like, that's not going to work because he's going to bleed all over the place. And then he says, go to go of Kagura. And she's like, I don't want you underneath me because I don't want you to bleed all over me like you did with her. He's like, don't worry. I would never do that for you. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell is that for? Um, that's really good. I like the bit where they he's pretending to be a pimple. And they say, like, one of the guards show up. So he goes like, oh, he's just a pimple. Be a pimple. He's like, okay, I can get some clear saw for you. And then what he gets is like, uh, it's a pun on chainsaw. So he shuts, he, they think he's going to chainsaw it off and he chainsaws off just the glasses. And from that point on, I don't think Shinpachi has glasses for the rest of this arc. <laughs> they I don't chainsaw- think he does, no. <laughs> he never does. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was good. It was nice to see Sakamoto. I also liked how Sakamoto explained how he brought the Elizabeths there. Because he says, like, oh no, they wanted to, like, show, like, a peaceful thing. Like, here is me, Darth Vader. He wanted to, you know, hold the world. He wanted to protect it. And then it goes to his, like, (laughs) assistant. And she's like, it very clearly looks like he's trying to take over the Earth. He's like, what? Nah, he would never do that. (laughs) You're crazy. You're paranoid. He would never do that. So they explain, and then I think they cut back to uh, Kentucky and Shimpachi, which is something they do throughout the entire arc, where they're just both very, very clearly pissed off that they're in this arc. Because they're like, this is so stupid, it should have never gotten this far, and yet because of this dumbass and his inability to uh, gauge that he wanted to take over the world, we have to deal with this problem. I also like during the um, the negotiations that they had, he's like, all that it is is Sakamoto throwing up in a bag, and then they go like, all right, we have reached a deal. He goes like, what did you do? He's like, we put our guts all over. We put we we spoke our guts out. He's like, no, you just threw up your guts throughout the entire meeting. That's what you actually did. He's like, no, we in in pure silence we figured out a deal. <laughs> That's how business is done. <laughs> in pure silence. So yeah, it was a it was a good uh, start of the arc, and I also really liked that Gundam reveal at the end. Uh, especially with Dark Vader, how close that is to just straight up Darth Vader. They were really skirting the lines of copyright, and it only makes it that much funnier that it was the politician that threw a stink for this. <laughs> no one else cared except for that one politician in the previous episode. Uh, let's move on to episode 234, um, which is titled Piggy Banks and Trash Cans. Go ahead, Zen. So in 234, um, they start talking about the Gunsums. They're, they're, it's a D instead of a, um, a D for the Gundams. They're, yeah. they're Gunsums. Um, and they're like, wow, is that not going to like get us in trouble with Gundam? And they're like, nah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're, we're animated by the same company. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> what, who we sue ourselves? Um, and so they go to try to like sabotage the Gunsums. Um and they end up playing Uno. I don't remember what makes them start playing Uno. Oh, it was in the um, previous episode. They were playing Uno. 
uh, where it's like, you need to be ca- careful, Shinpachi. And then they're like, you guys are t- clearly just playing Uno in your suits. Yeah, they're just playing Uno for some for some reason. And they just call it Uno also. So I guess that's just like, it's very different in in Japan, I guess, with how that kind of stuff works. I guess so. Um, because they literally just call it Uno. Like, you know, they don't have to, like, make a fake name for it. They're just playing Uno. Um, Everyone has Uno, Zen. <laughs> it yeah, comes it free, with, free with the Xbox. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. Turns out it's also safe from copyright law. It can just be Uno. <laughs> you can just, yeah, you just have Uno. Um, and so uh, they're, like, sabotaging the stuff. And then uh, we find out that Mutsu's uh, attempt to stop Dark Vader has failed. And they're in prison. Um, and so they're like, all right, Gintoki and Sakamoto are going to go fight Vader, and Katsura is going to go fight Elizabeth, no matter what. They're, he's going to go like have a showdown with Elizabeth. Um, and they show this shot of them where they like revert back to their war, their, their like, uh, Amanto war outfits. Yes. Uh, and it's really funny when it, when it flashes out of their fucking Elizabeth suits <laughs> into those outfits. It reminds me um, of the the monkey the the cat bit. Really? Yeah. Um. And so then they're they're like, are there? There might be spies here, and then they throw their suits off, and Gintoki has his sword out, and Sakamoto's just got a gun. <laughs> uh, and then they're like, "All right, we're here to invade your planet," and so Gintoki starts like beating ass, and then um. Sakamoto's like, I'm gonna go wild. And he pulls out, like, I don't know what it's like. He's basically like trying to make a business deal with one of them. Yeah, he pulls out like, his business card. Yeah, and he's like, Which one are you? Are you the right dragon? And he's like, Yeah, I'm the I'm I'm the red dragon. I'm like, okay, I'll stop. And he like sits on a little cushion with him and they just start talking. All while uh, in the background Gintoki's Gintoki getting... is fucking fighting. Yeah, in the background he's fighting like a bunch of them while he's just like sitting here talking about it. Um And then they, uh, uh, what happens? Oh, that, and then Elizabeth, uh, shows up in, in a Gunsome to fight, uh, Dark Vader. No, that's not what happens. Is that when Elizabeth that's shows not, up to that's attack not him? Not this is, you missed the part where Katsura goes inside a Gunsome to go, uh, fight. He's going to go out and, like, help Elizabeth or go fight Elizabeth. And then when he leaves out, that's when um, uh, Fumiko comes out and says, I've actually um, play made it so that all the Gunsums explode. So then when he's out in the Gunsum, it just blows up <laughs> with him inside of it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And then... Um, and then I think that's when... Yes, yeah, so, so Sakamoto gives his big like speech about like uh the, an, the Earth is just a rock; it's the people that actually make a planet. Um, and I think this is when the rain gets reversed, and like the the thing that he was doing, it's uh it's been reversed, and there's like a big message from Elizabeth from it. Um, and then that's when he goes inside the gunsum and he attacks the. Oh, that's right. When he when he writes the message in the clouds, where it's like um, to all my to my friend with love or whatever. Yes, and um, then and then he's yeah, in, and then, fighting. He, then he's in the gunsum, and then he actually talks, and he doesn't use the sign, and he says, "This is for Katsura. and then and he that, has a guy like a very manly voice. He does, and then he punches the 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 shiphead where uh, Dark Vader is, and then that's where it ends right there. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, that took a bit. But yeah, you're right, there, there's a lot happening there at the end. <laughs> yeah, it, it starts going really fast here at the end. Yes, it yes it does. Uh, how'd you like this one, Zen? Uh, really good. Really good stuff. I love Elizabeth's uh, face turn with the <laughs> with the gunsum. <laughs> it's really good. It is very good. You're um, right, that was a face, because he, he had turned yeah. heel. He had betrayed yeah, his friends. Elizabeth had turned heel. Um... <laughs> Thought that was really good. I really liked the bit where Sakamoto is just like hashing it out with this guy on those little cushions. Um, and Gintoki's getting pissed and he's like, Don't worry, this is my version of going wild. He's like trying to <laughs> calm him down. He's like, I've got this. <laughs> um, was really funny. 
uh the whole thing was was good it was a solid episode yeah it's especially funny because right before then they say like hey have you lost anything since becoming a businessman he's like no i can still i can still hang and then his version of hanging is doing this uh um, is, is yeah just making a deal yeah, is making a deal, which in the beginning is played for a lot of laughs as Gintoki's going on, but then as it goes on and he keeps saying, like, no, you can take the earth, it's fine, what I care about is the people, um, and if anything, what he's like, what you have are white devils, what I have is the, and then he calls them what, what Gintoki is called as, like the white, uh, Yaksha? The Yaksha, yeah. yeah. He's like, and this is unfortunate because mine, he'll never stop. He'll never stop doing that. He's like, you would sell your friends? He goes like, please understand that I take this 100% serious when I'm selling my friends. I'm not joking here. I'm not making anything. He, like, is able to deliver it in such a way that it's, like, it's crazy because the delivery stays the same, but it starts silly in the beginning, and then by the end of it, it's actually kind of like a heartfelt message where he's saying, like, I think we should actually work together. We'll invade whatever planet you want, and that will be your planet um because at the end of the day the earth is only a rock what i care about is the people and this kind of goes opposite of what dark vader was saying in the beginning where he said like all that matters is the planet the people are just tools that i use and that's it um so it was very well done like you said when elizabeth actually talks it is actually doing legit i was like holy shit they really are going all out for this elizabeth thing because he has not he only ever talks when it was like a funny joke or something or like when it was like the director of animation here to apologize <laughs> that gintama has been shitty lately <laughs> and i promise to do better like those are really the only times he ever spoke but this is actually a legit moment and he's having like a, a moment here when he's doing it so I thought it was really good. Um, the Earth kind of going back was really good. The reveal that uh, Fumiko wired all the gun dump, the gun sums so that they would explode on impact, and Katsura just fucking blows up in space <laughs> is really good. Uh, the bit there where they're in the Elizabeth suit and they like turn back and they talk to Katsura because I think Katsura has a talk with Elizabeth about um, why don't they. Um, they team up and stuff or something like that. Why don't you speak up and speak out against it? He's like, what I'm doing here, I'm doing to protect my friends and stuff like that. And you shouldn't say stuff like that and talk in your signs because uh, if they kill people for insubordination and stuff like that. Uh, I also like the beginning part where when they're like, Shibachi's like, I don't know, man, what are we going to do? Gintoki, what are we going to do? And they cut to Gintoki and he's telling them all of Earth's weakness because they're getting ready for invasion. They're like, oh my God, they've reverted back to their Amonso days of war. <laughs> And they're saying, like, you have to hit uh, humans in three places. It's the three M's. You have to hit them with their money, their mom, and what is the last one? It's like their money. Their... I feel like it's something about balls, but I don't know how you put balls in M. <laughs> their manhood. That's what it is. That's you... what it was. You yeah. have to hit them in those three places. <laughs> so you need to kick them in their manhood, take their mother, <laughs> and take their money. <laughs> It is, is is really good. It's a really good scene. That they're talking about. All right, now everyone play Uno, and then all the Elizabeth starts playing Uno, <laughs> and then that's when uh, Elizabeth shows up and talks about like, man, you really were able to cut the tension with something as good as Uno. I was like, yeah, well, um, Uno is a great way. If anything, this feels like a great episode to make you want to go play Uno because I did have a feeling of wanting to go play Uno while I was watching it because I was like, you know what. It would be kind of fun to play some Uno right now. Give plus two, plus four. They even talk about like, oh yeah, they played a plus two and then I played a plus four. Because at some point, Mutsu calls up and she's like, oh, what are you going to do, Sakamoto? He's like, well, my current plan is is that I'm going to play a plus four because they just played a plus two. They'll make it so that I don't have to draw and they draw. And she's like, are you a fucking idiot? <laughs> I'm in jail. <laughs> what have you been yeah, doing? What, what did he say? They said I wasn't allowed to play the plus four, so I ripped it in half. Yeah, I, they, that, yeah. Then they said I couldn't play the plus four, so I ripped it in half because then it would be a plus two. And at that point, she just stops him because she's just tired of him. <laughs> she's done hearing about whatever he has to say. Um, I also like that all a lot of the Elizabeths are dressed up as uh, characters from other animes. Like there's a Naruto Elizabeth, there's a Kakashi Elizabeth. One of the ones that asks, I think, about how to play the rules of Uno is dressed as Rock Lee. <laughs> um, That's funny. Yeah, the Tony Tony Chomper is in one of them. They have his little hat. <laughs> like, there's a lot of anime references to all the Elizabeths dressed up and stuff like that. 
So yeah, uh, this is another really good episode. I really liked a lot of it. It was very funny, and then a lot of the parts where it was serious, I really liked the serious moments. Like, especially with Sakamoto, the way he, uh, like, when he's telling him about, like, this is our plan, this is how it's gonna go, and he never breaks smile, even when the sword is, like, literally at his head, and it's causing him to Yeah, bleed. it's, like, cutting into his forehead. Yeah, I was like, this is literally the most badass Sakamoto has ever looked, and he's just being a businessman. Um... But it kind of goes back to what he said a whole long time ago, where he's like, I want to help Earth, but in a different way. I don't want to fight anymore. I want to do it this way. I want to try and improve relationships and stuff like that. And this is them kind of showing how he's able to do that. Uh, and also that shot of him and Sakamoto is really good with the gun and the sword. It's a very cool shot, even though Sakamoto does not fight at all right afterwards. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a great shot when he's got the gun out and he does not use it at all. He does not use it at all. The gun is for show. I also think it's funny that Kentucky is clearly the the threat of the two, and he's the one with the wooden sword compared to the uh -huh. character with the gun. Always a good uh, good sign. All right, let's move on to episode two thirty five called Empty Planet. Go ahead, Zen. Episode 235, uh, Elizabeth is attacking Dark Vader. Uh, and then Fumiko's like, yeah, we gotta make sure that the invasion, we, we stop the invasion. Um, but Vader is fighting uh, Elizabeth, like, and fighting Elizabeth's Gundam just on his own, like, with his own body. He's shooting his big-ass blast out. Um... And is giving this speech like, oh, you're going to die out here in space all alone, no friends. All, everyone that you betrayed hates you on both sides. And Elizabeth's like, that's fine. As long as I can die as Katsura's friend, that's all that matters. Um, and then Katsura stabs Vader through the head from behind with his sword because he survived the explosion. And his Elizabeth costume has become like a spacesuit. Yeah, and he has, like, a little uh, front of it. Yeah, it's got, like, a space helmet in the mouth. Um, and he slices Vader in half, but then Vader survives, because he's, like, a like a cyborg, he's, like, a robot guy. Um, and his body, like, reconstructs. And so then the Death Star fleet of Elizabeth faces shows mm -hmm. up. And he's like, all right, fire and kill them. But then they fire and they hit Vader instead. And then it turns out that Sakamoto actually turned the whole army and was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna keep my end of the deal, and we're gonna we're gonna conquer that planet for you. We're gonna conquer the Death Star Elizabeth face for you." Um, so then Vader shoots a beam, and Gintoki goes out in his own Elizabeth spacesuit and deflects it with his sword, <laughs> which is really cool. He really does yes, just fucking is. go, "Wow, whatever you're saying." <laughs> <laughs> that shit and it's gone. Um. And then he jumps off, the because he's on Sakamoto's ship, like he's standing on it. Uh, and he jumps off and he stabs Vader in the mouth with his sword. Um, and it makes his, like, eye beam, or, like, his mouth beam um, backfire. But then that's still not enough, and he's still alive. Um, and so then it turns out that all of the Renho, like, robot leaders have just been puppets for, like, a, like a, the main computer... Um, and then Vader is, like, super strong, so he's blowing up all their ships and stuff, but then it turns out that, um, Fumiko has, like, sabotaged the core thing, um, and so it ends up, like, I think I'm pretty sure it ends up flashing everyone, like, it pulls up its Elizabeth that, suit to, later. like, reveal its core. That's later. Um, that oh, is it later? Yeah, that's later. What happens here next is that um, they turn into the giant robot. Because they're like, how the hell are we going to fight that? Because he turns into the giant Elizabeth robot. Oh, that's right. And then she's the one that, like... Um, yeah, so... Yes, so that with this episode... Forces it to transform again. <laughs> this episode ends with the, the facial. So that's they, right. They transform into this giant um, transformation sequence for the Cayenne field with, like, the Cayenne, like, theme song. <laughs> and then at the end, it goes, like, we have six parts here that will control it. We have the left le the legs, which will be co controlled by Mutsu and uh, Kagura. And then for the, I think they say the dirty woman has the crotch. Uh, Sakamoto <laughs> and Gitoki have the arms. And then the head, the pimple is, um, 
is uh, Shinpachi. And then they go like, all right, everyone, let's fight. And then that's when Fumiko shoots the crotch cannon directly at its face. And then you see like her in space with her with her with her face going, ah, and that's how that's how the episode ends with Shinpachi go like, no, we blew our load way too early. <laughs> And that's where this one ends. Uh, the What you're talking about is the end of the next one. So we'll end it right here. I'll we'll talk more about it from right here. How do you feel about Empty Planet? Uh, it was good. I liked the reveal that Sakamoto actually did pull through. Um, and it turned all of them and they're going to like rebel against their evil overlord who like dehumanized them and whatnot. Because apparently the reason they talk with signs is it's like a rule. That they have to wear the Elizabeth suits and talk with signs instead. Yeah. Um, yeah it, it was good. It was good. I like Katsura and Elizabeth's little moment. Uh, like their powwow. They have like a friendship speech after Katsura <laughs> cuts Vader in half. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also think it's funny how Vader has like six death fakeouts. Like it just keeps happening. You know what this was reminding me of? He was, he was, uh, obviously it's very similar to like Frieza, where Frieza keeps coming back. But I'll say, based off of some current ongoing mangas, it did remind me of certain villains from there <laughs> and their ability to continuously keep coming back. <laughs> That's funny. It totally does. It does. It was, uh, it was a full on, uh, shouted trope though. But obviously it is based off of stuff like Frieza, where Frieza just kept coming back. Um, I like that the giant red hoe is called the White Lucifer. <laughs> yeah, they all have, like, these crazy names. They do. It's really good. And I like that the second they brought it up, Kitoki's like, what the fuck are we going to do against that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like, what? I don't know. I don't know, man. That's a lot to deal with. And then the reveal that, um, that the, the Cayenne always had the ability to transform. And then Sakamoto's like, hey, wait a minute. I didn't approve that. And she's like, whatever, you were in the hostess clubs. I can do whatever the hell I want here. And from that point on, the the chap, the the the, the, the crew on the Cayenne treat her like the, the captain. It's like, yes, yes, ma'am. Because, like, everyone is clearly just on her side and not Sakamoto's on this one. Uh, that was pretty good. And, yeah, I really did like that the ending of it was just straight up. <laughs> they threw a facial directly at the face of the giant Elizabeth. And I was like, that is, uh, at the beginning, I was like, is that supposed to be, like, um, was it supposed to be, like, a subtle thing? And then the next episode, they go right into it. It goes like, nah, it wasn't supposed to be subtle. I just want you to know for a fact that was, in fact, the facial. That was 100% what we were going for in the previous episode, unless it was unaware of what was going on. Uh, and I also like the Cayenne theme song that starts playing because it's like ka ka ka, and it kind of sounds like an old Gundam song as well that's playing while it's transforming, which is really good. Also, that it's a businessman robot. They talk about it more in the next episode that this is a a robot only built for business, but when it finishes transforming, it has like a little robot tie, <laughs> which is really good. Uh, See, so yeah, that was episode 325, so let's actually end the arc now with episode 236. Don't say goodbye, Lionel. Go ahead, Zen. So they uh, attack the White Lucifer, and it's like this whole big-ass fight, and he's like fighting. Uh, Sakamoto's got his own Gundam, um, but his I think his ship transformed into it, and uh, they're... <laughs> They have this whole fucking battle going on. Um, they lose the, the limbs of their robot. But then Shinpachi turns him into like a big blaster. Uh, and they all... Or no, after, before this, Fumiko is the one that does the thing. Mm -hmm. And like lifts up the core. And then they all do like a crazy anime team-up blast. Um up into the core, including... I feel like this might just be a shot from Gundam. I guess I don't remember if it is or not, because I haven't watched Gundam in a very long time. But when Elizabeth's Gundam just points the gun straight up in the air and shoots it, <laughs> um, it looks very familiar to me. I don't know if that's actually a, just a I recreated shot I wouldn't shot be or surprised not, but... if that is a direct reference to something, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and they blow up the core, and Fumiko... Um, seems like it, she sacrificed herself... To, to destroy the core 
Uh, and then we cut back to Earth after the battle, and everyone has head bandages on, and they've all got amnesia, and they're like, hey, it, they basically replay the beginning of the arc. And he's like, I found this sign from Elizabeth. It says, don't look. What does that mean? And then Elizabeth uh, is also on the ship and also has amnesia and is still talking with the sign while everyone else is out of their Elizabeth costumes except for Elizabeth. Um, and then Katsura and Elizabeth play uh, Uno. And Katsura is like, if I win... Then you know you you stay with us, and if you win, you can wipe our memories. And then it, it turns it, out that um, it's not that he stays with us; it's that I'll remember you. Right, right, right. That, yeah, I won't. Me. You won't wipe my memory. Yeah. yeah. Um. And then it seems like uh, Elizabeth wins because you know they're giving like this big speech about how um, Elizabeth is looking down on a planet that no longer you know remembers them. And Katsura's crying, and they're, like, playing Uno, and they have cards dealt for one person who's not there. Um, but then it, it's revealed that they do remember, and they make an Elizabeth face out of Uno cards. Um, and they, like, say goodbye and everything when Elizabeth is, is up on the ship. And they give this heartwarming speech that's, like, uh, that empty planet, the the... Elizabeth's treasures were still on that planet and they managed to protect them and it like shows them all. It's playing like the sad Gintama song while Elizabeth is flying away as like Uno cards blow away on the breeze. Um, and then it plays the credits and I was like, holy fuck, is Elizabeth gone? <laughs> but then after the credits, uh, it turns out that the Elizabeth that left was only the temp intern that only worked on Mondays. Uh, and the real Elizabeth is back. And then Katsura is like, ha see you later, Monday, Elizabeth. Sorry you weren't in Benny Zakura, loser. <laughs> like, my, my yeah, favorite... It turns out that that was only the temp Elizabeth for and, the Monday shift. And also not of the same race. So completely different and unknown. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and then it's so fucking, that reveal where they're like, hey, Katsura, I'm back. I brought you a gift. And it's like a little <laughs> toy Elizabeth. Oh, it's really good. And it ends with everyone beating the shit out of Katsura. And it ends with, like, the bloody... <laughs> the bloody Elizabeth floating in the lake. As all the kids that uh, Fumiko, who has somehow survived blowing up, uh, is telling the kids the picture book story. And it just says the end. And the reason that she wasn't telling them at the beginning is because she drew too much frightening pictures. And this one scared them. And that's the end of the Renho arc. Zen, how'd you feel about it? Uh, it was really good. The ending was an excellent bait and switch. I mean, I don't know why I expect different anymore from Gintama. Because every time they do something with a big character, I'm like, no fucking way, what? <laughs> and then it's like, no, we're just fucking around. Like when I thought um, that they, they really, really killed would... a Tose. Yeah. And I was like, no fucking way. <laughs> uh, nope, they sure didn't. And then when they were like, Elizabeth, they, they did like a whole dramatic goodbye with, like, the Uno cards blowing off into the sunset, and I was like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. No, it was, it was the temp Elizabeth. It was actually a very touching story by the end, because you was it talking about... It was a about... really, like, emotional scene. It was. I was like, it actually... It was like, even in my head, I was like, there's no way that Elizabeth... There has to be something here. And then by the end of it, when they do the reveal of the Uno, I was like, no. Not like this. <laughs> not Elizabeth. And yeah, they do... not Elizabeth. Damn, not them. And especially because they do the... It's so funny because this episode is also uh, a callback to the first the the first episode of this arc where they talk about like what Katsura and Elizabeth always did together was at quote commercials to each other all the time and there's like a Japanese commercial specifically with Lionel Richie, um, which is what this one is based off of and it's also the last thing that Katsura and Elizabeth say to each other and when they start the credits that's the first thing you see as well. Of, like, to say, like, yeah, it's over now. And they show the commercial. And it's uh, really fucking well done. And then that fucking end credits, they just get you. And, like, actually, no, Elizabeth is here to say. Also, it, uh, this is that was only the Monday Elizabeth. And also, completely different race. So you actually were back to square one in terms of doing act fuck all about Elizabeth. Uh-huh. Oh, really good. <laughs> really good end to the arc. Um... 
the some of the some of the stuff I like I really did like um, Fumiko's end here because it reveals that the the facial that she did on him she wasn't premature ejaculating it was actually all on purpose. <laughs> And she was there always to attack the brain to let them open up. And I also like her last lines, which is like, check it out, uh, check it out, everyone. It's the last time I open myself up for you guys to see. <laughs> it's the last upskirt shot of mine that you'll ever see. And, they, they... <laughs> and it's the one done for the Elizabeth planet, which is really well done. I really liked it when all of them shot it. Um... <laughs> because it was a very funny visual. The idea that it's ending with everyone just shooting their blast directly into this giant Elizabeth planet is very funny. But then when they actually blow it up, it's like, um... The explosion is that it's kind of like a... Very similar to, I guess, what a space explosion would be. Where it's like a giant, like, huge explosion, but you don't hear anything. So that's why a lot of the time when they go back to it, you feel, like, weird and hazy for where it goes back into them not remembering anything. Um, I like that they were able to call back to the Uno thing. Because in the uh, two episodes ago specifically Elizabeth talked about why they loved Uno so much. It was because they had a friend on Earth that they would play uh, Uno with, and um, they could never actually legitimately beat them, um, which is Katsura. So he's like, sometimes I, was, I would just let him win because I just felt bad for him, and that's the way it goes. And when Katsura is awake, yeah, he's like... Katsura I canonically sucks at Uno. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, and then when he's going there, he's like, I want to fight you at full power, basically, and play Uno. And he says, like, I was he, when it reveals that Katsura was actually able to win, because like it was a fair fight. And then Elizabeth says, It's not a fair fight. How am I supposed to play Uno when I can't see past my tears? And Katsura says, No, it is fair, because I also can't see. <laughs> and they're both crying. And the card that Katsura has when he's looking up is actually the tear stained Uno stop card. <laughs> it's the last card of the Uno game they played. <laughs> very well that's why it's like it's so well delivered it's like every little little like bit to it just uh fits to it um the fumiko style story at the end when she's telling it to the kid also goes back to the first one it ended up being a fantastic arc for something that what felt like it was going all over the place in certain parts <laughs> considering that all the things we mentioned where it's like yeah uh, a giant business robot shows up in space and they shoot a a uh, cum shot directly into the planet and that's what ends up causing him to explode and it actually has a super heartfelt ending to it for what is a character. Some character, this fake out ending is better than some character endings that actual characters get. Some main characters... It, is. it, it legitimately is. It legitimately is. Some, I wish it, some characters... It was characters, an ending so good that it convinced you it was for the actual Elizabeth. It was. And the reveal that it's like, yes, Elizabeth is going away. The Monday Elizabeth, everyone. It kind of feels like that joke from uh, The Simpsons where it's like, Mom, Dad, Bart's dead, Bart's dead, dead tired of not going to Itchy and Scratchy Land. <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of that, but it is... Uh... It is fantastic. It is great. It was a fun ride. It was also the idea that they basically got to have their cake and eat it too. So the entire time I'm like, oh, so that's the Elizabeth backstory. All of that explains all the things that we saw previously. Okay, I think I get it. And then they reveal here, actually, they're completely different. I'm like, fuck you, man. I don't, <laughs> I'm back to square fucking one in terms of understanding. It's super funny, though, when he's like... Um... Sorry you didn't get any screen time in Benny Zakura. That was That funny. was this, Elizabeth. <laughs> that was this, It's not the one, the one that had the heartfelt moment. They couldn't even give it to this one. Uh-huh. They were like, yeah, this, Elizabeth, was the one in Benny Zakura, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Which is extremely funny to me. It is funny. Now that you mentioned, you're right, they did that specifically to say, don't worry, it's not the one from Benny Zakura. Yeah, they, they made a point to say the one that left is not the one that was in the Benny Zakura <laughs> Oh my god, so good. Yeah, I really like this arc. Did you, uh, how do you, I think, did I ask you how you feel? If not, you did. Over... But uh, it is an excellent arc. It was 20 out of 10. Super good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is one kind... of the better ones in a while. All of the, the bit where they do the Star Wars crawl up the screen. Yeah. <laughs> really good. Yes. This is kind of what I want for the more comedy-focused arcs of this kind. Where it's like it's it, the 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 jokes are pretty good throughout it all, and then it's still an emotional moment at the end. Where like I feel like some of the ones that we've had that are the style of this, they kind of like 
they got they they struggle in the first two episodes and then they get it at the last two. This one feels like it got a better grasp of it way early on. Um, and it was also nice to see Sakamoto as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's always funny when a character points out how rarely they're in the show because mm-hmm. it actually happens a lot. But it's usually characters being like, "Why don't you use me more?" When he showed up here, he was literally like, "I have no idea what I've been. In since, <laughs> how long it's been since I've been here?" Uh, it's so funny that that moment where he says, "Like I'm ready to help you with Jin." He's like, "That was uh, that was like six months ago. You're so late." <laughs> Which makes me feel like he wanted to show up for that moment where they're all there to protect the the bar uh, from Otose's bar, and he just didn't make it in time. <laughs> and he just wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, really good, really good arc. So that's it for Gintama this week. Let's look on what's ahead for next week because we're about to, like I said, uh, fucking gas, gas, gas our way for Gintama. Because I believe next week we have episodes 237 and 238, which is another tiny arc called Vacation Arc. And then it's uh, 239, 240, which is the Scandal Arc, which is another little tiny arc. And then... <laughs> We have to combine that with the host club arc, which is 241 to 242, and then combine that with episode 243. So that's going to be a total of episodes 237 to 243. The reason is is because after that is a four-episode arc. And then after that four-episode arc is a bunch of uh, non-arc-related ones, and then it's another big arc coming up, I think. Yeah, and then from this point, we're gonna get we're gonna hit to the point pretty soon where it's gonna be some really big big ass arcs coming up for uh, for this uh, season. I guess is the best way to say it. We're also gonna get pretty close to the point where I think Gintama took like a year long break <laughs> in between stuff. <laughs> uh, we'll know when we get there because <laughs> it'll be very clear that um, they were gone for a while. Uh, but yeah, that should hopefully be for next week. It will be episodes 237 to 243, which is I think might be seven episodes in total. That is correct. Seven episodes. Damn. Yeah, that's a lot. But then the next week after that is going to be four. Allocate so. the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. make sure to allocate the time. Otherwise, we're going to end up in a situation where it's like, oh... Now both of these are stuck in the uh, yeah, Kuroko. in perpetual work limbo. Yes, that would be bad if both this and Kuroko were stuck of like we just didn't have time for either one of them. And honestly, to make it better, we might do a thing where it's like um cuz it's looking pretty good for me for next week. I talked to my boss to say like, "Hey, anything else, boss?" And they said like, "Not really, looking like you might be good to go for whatever." So, if it's looking bad on your side, we might just call it and say it's going to be Vacation Arc and Scandal Arc, and then we can do um, another tiny one after that. It all depends on time. We'll talk more about that when it gets closer to our recording date. Maybe I'll uh, talk to you on Tuesday or Monday and see how we'll gauge the situation. Yeah, because well, part of me is like, well, I'll should just watch one episode a day, but then it's like, I will not remember. Yeah, we <laughs> have to... to talk about it. Like, if I watch the first one tonight, by the time we record, I'm like, I have no fucking... It, it, can, it can be pretty tough. Like, even in here, that's why it's like, I also want to do that, because there'll be occasionally times where you're like, did this happen on this episode or the next episode? And the answer is, especially for this one, near the end of it, when everything was, like, kind of popping off and going, and it was, like, going super crazy fast, um, if I did not take a break in between Empty Planet and Goodbye Lionel, I would have been with you and saying, like, yeah, and then they go into the giant robot, and then it just kind of ends from there, but no... It can, uh, in order for the best, <laughs> the best chance for it, we try and watch it as close to the recording date as we can. Um, unless, unless you're like me and you're taking crazy notes along the way, uh, for some future stuff for it at the same time. But anyway, that's hopefully for next week. Uh, I'm pretty sure there will be another, uh, again, I don't want to jinx myself, but we're going to get pretty close to the time where we're going to have to, uh. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out some other stuff because we're going to be going in through some really crazy arcs near the end of here. Because we're currently on episode uh, 2... I literally just... Yeah, 237. And so that means we have still over an ep- 100 episodes to go, but we're getting close. When we hit 269, we have only yeah, 100 episodes left. 67, it looks like the internet says. 
Yeah, 360. Yeah, 360 set and 360 set. Uh, three, uh, what the fuck am I talking about? It's a little bit weird just because when Silver Soul arc ends, the movie is technically the end of the arc. There's a lot. Uh, of, oh, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we'll have to talk about when it comes to that because it gets a little bit funky. And for what I've been told by a lot of Gintama fans, it's because the author of Gintama was a little bit unclear of when he was actually going to end the series. <laughs> So a lot of people were like, okay, so it's ending now? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No, actually, I need a little bit more time. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's why we're near the end of it. It will probably be a good idea to hit up the manga. And at that point, we'll go over to your show. And we'll talk about the Gintama and manga for there. <laughs> <laughs> then it will be shown in and chill. If you actually, to fully replicate the experience of Gintama... The ending of Gintama Shonen Archive will not happen in Shonen Archive. It will actually happen on Zed's channel. And over on Shonen Archive. For sure, Shonen Archive. The Gintama edition. <laughs> the Gintama edition. The official end of it all. Because I heard, like, for a lot of it, it's like, yeah, it's probably good for the ending arc here to see the manga. Because the anime was not able to fully adapt everything. So we'll see when we get there. But anyway, uh, that's the current Gintama update. So as always, if you want to... More stuff featuring Zen. You can go over to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill. Um, what's going on in the world of Shonen Jump right now, Zen? Kagarabashi still going strong. Um, nothing super different the past week. And then we are going into Golden Week this week, so there will be no magazine release. So mm. if you've been looking forward to a big chapter that's supposed to be dropping, bad news. Uh, Fuck. <laughs> I was. I was. Um, <laughs> well, not this week. You gotta wait an extra God week. Damn it! All right. For anyone who's listening to this part, skip to this forward ahead. Uh, I can say this to Zen because I know for a fact Zen doesn't care about spoilers. Uh, but that makes me so angry because One Piece ended with the motherfucker saying the world is sinking into the water. And oh, so now bad you, news. You have another week have to another wait. another fucking week to hear what Eggman has to fucking say about the earth. He has a, he's been, uh, okay. So for the past <laughs> three episodes, for the past three chapters, this motherfucker has been building tea saying in the next like uh, 30 minutes, I'm about to drop some heavy knowledge on you. And they've been basically fighting to try and stop him. Uh, one person to protect the message and one other... Not really to protect the message. Luffy's trying to fucking escape. The Gorosai are there, which are the, the evil people that never count on them. If you know... If you're familiar with the Shanks meme about him being a rat, that's the Gorosai. <laughs> it's the five old men. Um, <laughs> the Gorosai are attempting to stop the message because whatever it is, it's going to completely fuck up the government and everything that's going on. And that chapter recently ended with him. They literally had every character from One Piece going like, oh man, what is what does Eggman have to say? Like, these are characters that I have not seen in over a thousand chapters going like, oh, you know what, Let, let's hear what this old man has to say. And he, what he has to say is that we're fucked. The, we're sinking. <laughs> the entire world is going to fall into water. And that's how the chapter ends. And now you're telling me I have to wait another fucking two weeks to hear what that means? Yeah, there's so... It'll be 11 days before the next chapter drops. Oh, you got to be fucking kidding me, man. <laughs> this is... the Oh, my God. It's uh, it's bad enough that I have to wait for my hero because I like now I'm also putting into my head that I also have to wait another week for my hero, after my hero drop. What feels like you have to end this up pretty soon because there's no way that there's more after this, and Jujutsu Kaisen where I'm like I just want to see where you're kind of gonna keep going from this point on. <laughs> it's really annoying that there's a week break, but uh, you know what? Like I've said beforehand. It's fine if they're going to take a break. I want them to take a break. I'll just deal with it. But it is very annoying <laughs> that I'm dealing with it. But like a true fan, I'm going to stick with it so that they can actually legitimately just take a break. Because the opposite of that would be, hey, don't take a break during Golden Week. And that's just kind of fucked up. I'm not that evil. so Yeah, you don't want to like, work during the government-mandated week off. Yeah, I'm like, I don't work during the government-mandated week off, so why should they? <laughs> I wish we had a government-mandated week off. Oh no! Oh, actually, you're right. We don't have a week off. We have like we don't have one day. of those. We have government mandated days off. Yeah. What would be a good like? Hey, we're back. By the way, it's okay. I won't mention the spoilers. What would be a good like <laughs> way to be like a government sanctioned week week off? What would be like our big day? Because I feel like we have uh, big days, but then it's like a single day. But what is our big event that lasted like a week? 
that we could just I say I have like, a if anything I would think it which it should be the week of the fourth of July because um, yeah instead we of just the day yeah because we consider it, we usually consider it like a weekend even though like well we usually we don't work on Saturdays and Sundays but whatever I mean the longest work week holiday that I think exists is Thanksgiving because you get the day of and the day after like That's universally. True. Um, because I know some places don't get the day after Christmas off. Some places only get the day of. Really, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, and for me also. And again, it's... even that, even Thanksgiving and Christmas aren't universally acknowledged because like Walmart's still open. That's true. Hmm. There has to be some like the creation of the burger. Let's just for a full week. It's similar to our Golden Week where we're like, okay, on this week, this was the creation of the burger. This is when they said, let's add some cheese on it. This is when they said, let's add some other tomatoes and other stuff on it. And then kind of go from there. Like, I'm trying to think of what is so important to Americans. And I went to Burger, but I'm not 100% sure. It's a shame. I don't even know what uh, Golden Week is for. So maybe I should. I think they just celebrate, like, the elderly or something, right? And kids. Ah, uh, let's look it up. What is Golden Week? Yeah, what is Golden Because I know for us, usually what Golden Week is, is the times where gotchas release really good stuff um, yeah. yeah really good stuff and i know it's because thanks to persona 4 i know it's because kids receive money from the elderly um because it's kid day so they get money so that's why you yeah come- so there's there's showa day i don't know what that is sure um constitution day mm. greenery day and children's day yeah that's the day i'm thinking of oh okay so the first holiday is named in honor of showa emperor hirohito Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so so Greenery Day was moved to May fourth. April twenty ninth is Showa Day, a day to reflect on the events of the Emperor's reign. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Constitution Day honors the Japanese Constitution that was ratified following their defeat at the end of World War Two. Okay. All right. Children's Day is called. The Boys Festival is May 5th, where parents pray for the health and success of their sons. Apparently not the daughters. Um, (laughs) By decorating their houses with carp-shaped streamers and displaying samurai dolls. And Greenery Day is meant to show the Emperor's appreciation for Japanese nature and wildlife. Okay. So what we do here, all right, translate it to us. George Washington Day... George Washington. That's President's Day. We have that. We have to separate it. We have to say that these other presidents, <laughs> this one is the bigger one. All right. We, have get- to, we as a nation get to vote. Which is our actual best president? <laughs> Who is number one? Is it the first? Is it George? Is it Abraham? Is it Teddy? We have to come as a nation to agree so we can fucking find a date and celebrate them and then to have the next day be that guy now celebrates it so we can all have a week off. That's how I'm going to get this through Congress. It's like, I believe that all of us deserve a week off from work. And in order for us to advance as a nation, we need to follow what Japan's doing. So we need to find out which president is we're going to separate from President's Day. And say for a fact that this one gets his own special day. Man. That's fucked up. All right, we'll work on that. We'll workshop this. I'll talk to my Congress. I'll let them know about my my thoughts and ideas for the government, and I'm sure that it will be rightfully appreciated. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and go to Zen's channel if you want to hear more about uh, presidents. No, what are we? What is Shonen for Shonen Jump? Pre- uh, President John Jump. That's yeah. For President John Jump. Who created the first issue of Shonen Jump in a back alley, and he gave it to the kids so they could see. I'm going to stop talking now. Um, and then you're also still planning on trying. You're trying to get Iron Mon set up, right? Yeah, I don't really understand how to do it. I'm probably going to have to beg the Discord to help me. Um, it, I've got the tracker like up, mm-hmm. and it comes up, and like I can set the settings, but it doesn't start. Like, I'll start playing the game, and the tracker never is like, okay, I'm, like, on now. It still just sits there in, like, the setup menu. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, I'll have to keep fucking with it until I figure it out. Because I want to start running them. It it looks fun, but it's kind of a drag to watch without the tracker. Yeah, fair. You have to get get it all in order, basically. I understand that. Yeah. Uh, You can go over to my channel, where I do a bunch of stuff. Usually it's a lot of Fago stuff. If you want, if you're really interested in Fake Grand Order, go ahead and follow me. Uh, it's a, it's, it's during a crazy time in Fago, so that means uptick and subscribers, baby. Let's go, thumbs up all around. 
Um, because we're getting pretty close to anniversary time. <laughs> so oh, we, that's always good. So people are going to be rushing in. Yeah, and then over on uh, Japan for Golden Week, they drop like uh, an insane two units back to back. Basically, it's really funny because uh, Witch of the Holy Night is what it's called over here. And people are, if you don't know, this was a visual novel made way back in the day. And back in the day, Nasu, who is the main writer for not only Fago, but in general is the whole reason behind all this universe type shit that we talk about in Type Moon. Um, he said that there's a sequel coming and there's also a sequel to that one coming. And he said that in 20, around the release of this one and then never brought it up again until 2012. Cut to today in 2024, those units come out. And their Noble Phantasm, which is their special animations, come out and they play. And it is not stuff from the visual novel. And that goes for all three of the characters. There's stuff, it's stuff that has not been mentioned yet at all. And now we have a lot of people who don't play for Go who are going, Did this motherfucker just fucking spoil the un- his unmade sequel to his game in a mobile game? And it seems very wait, wait, like- wait, what? Hang on, what? So here's the thing. There's a VN where all this comes from, where Witch of the Holy Knight, right? Correct, you got me on here. Okay. There's supposed to be a sequel to it. The sequel has not been made yet and has been worked on since at least 2012. That was the last time we heard about it. We cut to today, 2024. He releases the units. Um, the units have noble phantasms for special moves that did not occur in the visual novel. And now, based off of reading around, because one of them, one of the characters dies in his noble phantasm. And they're like, that's the main character. He doesn't die in the VN. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> and so they looked it up and the name of his noble phantasm is the same day that um, one of the characters, which is Alka, is supposed to have like her destined day, which is supposed to be like her darkest day where something happens. And his noble phantasm is named exactly the same thing as that. So now people are putting together that the protagonist is going to die in a future <laughs> thing in a sequel. That's, that's insane. It has not been. Again, I want to say that this is all stuff that we don't know because he's never brought up the sequel because he's still working on it. So it's very likely that he has spoiled things that have not happened yet. And people are like, I can't believe this motherfucker. <laughs> Who does that? that? Insane. It is insane. Every, every, I, I was watching that and I was laughing because I was like, that's hilarious. Because you know for a fact the people who hate Fago and are just like, I wish they went back to more type moon visual novels are furious <laughs> right now. <laughs> Because they're like, I can't believe it. I've been waiting this long. He still hasn't released it. He's still cooking it up. And then he just casually drops a spoiler on us. It's amazing. Fate is an amazing series created by a crazy person. Who... So, uh, remarkably similar story, actually. Um, I never play this game because I don't mm -hmm. care about the, the IP. But, you know, Nier, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Nier Automata and stuff? Yeah, yep. So, they had a mobile game. It's called Nier Reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And, apparently... That game was essentially just the third Nier game. Like, it was canon. It had its own story and characters. It was the third, like, the fan base calls it Nier 3. Mm -hmm. um, well, they canceled it. Hmm? So, so there's a canon Nier game that has a full game's worth of lore that continues the plot that is 100% canon. And now they're, they're like, well, the story's done, so we're taking it offline. We're, we're closing it like a gotcha closes. It's a gotcha game. <laughs> and so now there's an entire canon entry in the near universe that people cannot play ever again. That is amazing. I mean, it's a dystopian look into the future of video games. But the future of hilarious. gaming, baby. <laughs> That is insane. It's similar. Like that. That definitely feels like a move of like a Japanese creator who did not actually think that far ahead into the future. And then now here we are. <laughs> it's very similar. Um, didn't Kingdom Hearts also do that? Isn't there lore stuff in the mobile game? There is. So Square Enix always puts lore in their mobile games for some fucking god awful reason. Sure, sure. Um, there is lore in the Kingdom Hearts mobile game, and it's extremely important lore because the Kingdom Hearts mobile game villain is now the main villain of the series. What? Yeah, yeah, I said yeah, you heard that shit right. So there's 
there's a whole backstory in the mobile game of like before the Keyblade War and like during this. It's a bunch of Kingdom Hearts. Stupid. Yes, but um. Xehanort's whole thing was like, oh, we're going to recreate the war or whatever to get Kingdom Hearts and get the special Keyblade. And um, the bad guy from before that was called the Master of Masters, and he's from the mobile game. And at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, he shows back up, and he's like, Xehanort's gone. I'm the bad guy now. And so if you didn't play the mobile game, you have no fucking idea. So they released the lore of the mobile game as a movie, if you bought the big pack of all of them together, right before Kingdom Hearts came out, they released like this giant super pack of like all of not not all of the games, but most of them like mushed together. Um, and like some of them were movies only, like the DS one, uh, three five eight over two days. The rocks mm-hmm. that was just a movie. Now, um, same with the mobile game was just a movie. And then also the Final Fantasy VII mobile game that's out right now, uh, Ever Crisis also has original story in it, which is all of Sephiroth's backstory. Uh, So when that goes offline, which it will, uh, you just won't be able to access the game that tells you all of Sephiroth's past anymore. It'll just be gone. That's fucking insane. It it really is some insane shit going on in Japan. That's so funny that, especially because it's so easily avoided, just don't put it on a mobile game. Like, hey, you didn't need to do this. You could have put it on anything, to be honest. People you literally could have. Like, mm-hmm. Or if you're going to keep making them... I assume they make them canon to get like people to play them, I guess. Because mm-hmm. they're like, you don't want to miss out on the fucking bullshit. Um, but like... If you're going to make a canon game and then take it offline so it's gone forever, why would you not release like a, a, a standalone version? Like, because you know about the city Opera Omnia, that mm-hmm. game? So that got canceled too. But, like, people are trying to find a way to make it, like, a standalone. Like, I think Dragali Lost did the same thing, where they made, like, an offline version yes, that you can it, play. Yeah. Um, and so they're still trying to do that, like, with this too, which makes me think, why would Square not just do that? Why would you not just package it and be like, hey, here's this whole game. It's 50 bucks or, you know, 60 bucks or whatever. And here it is. Just buy it if you want it. Like, yeah, that's a lot. And I think people will fall into that mobile game thing where they're like, I wouldn't buy this game for $60, but I will spend $500 worth of gotcha currency in it. You know what I mean? (laughs) Um, And so maybe that's why they don't do it. But even then, like, you're leaving money on the table. People want that story information. If you don't think they'll buy it at like 50 bucks, sell it for like 20 bucks. Why would you not? Yeah. Why would you release it as a... A fucking movie. And now Kingdom Hearts is like the worst with it. Because Kingdom Hearts... Do you play those games? I played um, 1, 2, and then a little bit... I played the GBA 1 fully. Um, okay. And then from there, it's kind of like every once in a while. I never got to play 3 because it was too much lore shit that I had to catch up on. Uh, and also because on the PC version, the Epic Game Store has it. And I have a specific... I refuse to buy it from the Epic Games Store. I'm still waiting. I still hope that it's going to drop That's on Steam, like with Final Fantasy That's VII, fair. but it, it hasn't happened yet. So uh, so I played those games as they were releasing, like mm-hmm. growing up. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3 I didn't like, and it's probably where I'm going to stop. But I got most of them like as they came out. Um, that shit sucked, dude. You basically had to buy a different game system every two years because Kingdom Hearts would release a game on some random fuck. So... Just the, the consoles that Kingdom Hearts was on as they released. So Kingdom Hearts 1, PlayStation 2. Mm-hmm. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Game Boy Advance. Kingdom Hearts 2, PlayStation 2. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep the uh, was on the... What the fuck was it called? Uh, PSP. Mm-hmm. And then you had Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days, which was on the Nintendo DS. Sure was. And then you had Kingdom Hearts Recoded, and Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, which were on the 3DS. A recoded might have been on the regular DS, because it looked like shit. So it might have been on the original DS. But the Dream Drop Distance was on the 3DS. And then Kingdom Hearts 3, which is on the PS4. So literally, like, you had to own five different consoles to have played these games as they were coming out. And then when Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, they were like, yeah, we just made them like movies. And you can get them for, you know, 40 bucks. Yeah. 
My favorite part is, is that during your story is that if anyone at any point after Kingdom Hearts 2 went, you know what, I'm going to buy a PS3 because eventually Kingdom Hearts 3 will release on it, it skipped it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. <laughs> the one that would have made the most sense to release a Kingdom Hearts game never got one. <laughs> Man. Yep. It just really didn't get much. It got weirdly... Which is funny. We're just rambling about games now. I don't know if yeah, we're still recording or not. It's, it's, I'm still uh. recording because we still need to do the ending bit. But, but go ahead. It's fine. <laughs> I, I always segment these off as like Wookie and Zen try and attempt Tangent. to end the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Final Fantasy. I know you're playing through those now, but I think that's mm-hmm. another one you didn't like fully get into like as they were coming out. Yeah, no. Um, so the PS3 got all three of the Final Fantasy 13 games. Mm-hmm. And then those are not playable on any other PlayStation. You can't play them on 4, and you can't play them on the 5. You can play them on PC. They did. I, I don't know. I think all three of them did get a Steam release. Yeah, all three but, of them are on Steam. That's where I was going to get them. Yeah. But um, they, they all three of them hit the PS3, and then they have never been made available on console again since then. That's a only ones all of the other ones have a re-release or a console like port or you know whatever for like where you can get it out of the store all of them but 13 can't get 13 anywhere Are... except for steam that's it is square stupid i think the answer is yes because i was like that's easy yes, money absolutely you, yes you just do a collection for, release them on the ps uh mm-hmm. the ps5 final and fantasy PS4. 13 all three games drop them for 60 bucks or 70 bucks or whatever yeah done Man, that's insane to me. Yeah, that is definitely something that, <laughs> as I was trying to look for the best way to play them, it's also very annoying because I'm like, is the Steam version good enough? And then I look at the comments and they're like, actually download this mod if you want to get the full experience of the PS1 version of here. I'm like, oh, I'm going to deal with this later. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to look away because I want to do it officially. But if they're going to fucking, if, it, if I'm going to play a bunky, just janky ass version of it, I may as well just get the emulator then at that point. Yeah, at that um, point, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's to get the the best best experience for it or something, or whatever. But it is definitely very annoying. As I was, uh, we'll end it on this one because I think it's funny. I was explaining to uh someone recently on um on Discord because they had just recently played Persona Three Remaster, and I was telling them about what happens with Elizabeth. Because if you remember correctly, if you remember Persona 3, she's not in Persona 4, and she's not in Persona 5, and neither is Margaret. And the end of Margaret's social link, she says specifically, something's going on with Elizabeth. And he's like, what's going on? And so I had to eventually tell him, if you played the fighting game, and you played her (laughs) story mode, you'll learn that she basically has the ability of the fool now. And they've been hinting that they've been that she's gonna go on her own persona adventure at some point. And she says, Man, he says and I told him this and he's like, That would be so cool. I would love to play one of those games. And he goes like, I would too. I've been waiting over ten yeah. years for them to <laughs> fucking do it. Because they dropped that on the three sixty era. <laughs> That's when the Persona Four <laughs> Arena game came out. And they have Both n- of them, I think, right? Yes, both that and the Ultimate Suplex edition. Um and that's what Elizabeth has been doing this entire time. And it, this is all stems back from one specific thing that she wants to do that is related to the events of Persona 3. And has never been followed up on and it's never been done. They've released multiple games, multiple spinoff games, some of them featuring Elizabeth, zero of them actually featuring the thing that they fucking promised me in the fucking fighting game. Also, the fighting games have multiple lore original characters that are canon to the universe in them they do yeah, i remember that that is the funny enough the first uh sh- the a character specifically has the ability to either die or live in persona 3 and it, you have to do a roundabout ass way to get make sure that they're living so for the longest time people assumed that this person was dead and then at the beginning of Ultimate Suplex Edition, they basically say, oh, hello, such and such, and they're alive. And it's like, wait, what? So many people learned for the first time that that person was even able to live. 
because they had no idea because you had to do like the most roundabout ass way like you had to talk to a character on specific days and tell them specific things and if you did that this character survived and it's hilarious now that apparently i i think i eventually asked them like what is that status of that and they told me i'm like okay interesting so i guess that is now the official reading but yeah it is uh video games are all over the fucking place <laughs> when it comes to their lore stuff and just like how this episode of Shonen Archive is ending, and it went all over the place, but it's okay. <laughs> all right, That's everyone. That's why you watch the show, because you love that. Yeah, exactly. You're here for that. And if you want to show more support for things like this, feel free to leave a comment or uh, um, like the video. Either way, just watching it is good enough for me. That's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. The Shonen has been archived. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>